Hello and welcome back to Will It Work? Today we're going to take a look at connecting a Palm PDA to the iPhone. Now this is something I wanted to do last summer at the very beginning of this series. So I took a look at the Palm PDAs and there's only a couple of them that did USB mass storage. A lot of them had USB ports for syncing to the Palm desktop software, but only two of them had mass storage support so they would appear as a disk on your desktop. One of them was the Tungsten T5 and the other one was the Life Drive. The Life Drive was a little different, it was a little thicker, it had a micro hard drive in it, the same one they used in the iPod Mini. So I decided to get that one. It looked a little different than the normal Palm PDA, but I decided to get that one and I could not get it to work with the phone. And not only could I not get it to work with the phone, I couldn't get it to mount on my Mac desktop. It was just a FAT32 disk and it didn't make any sense why it didn't work. If I plugged it into a Windows laptop we have here, it worked fine. It worked fine on my smart TV and other consumer devices. It just wouldn't work on Mac OS X. And I have a theory, it may be a little crazy, but some of you might remember back in 2009 when Palm uh, introduced the Palm Pre smartphone and they did something kind of sneaky. They made it identify itself as an iPod when you'd plug it into a computer so iTunes would sync with it. And then Apple would break that in the next release of iTunes and then Palm would fix it with an update and back and forth and back and forth and finally Palm gave up. I think somewhere in that battle, Apple blocked mass storage from working from any device identified as a Palm device. It's just uh, something that's stuck in the bowels of Mac OS X all these years later. Uh, it's not relevant anymore, but it's still there. And I think it's uh, trickled down to the iPhone as well. Again, nobody is thinking about it or keeping it in there on purpose because who cares about a Palm Pre today? But it's the only thing that makes any sense because every other device, it worked perfectly fine on. So I gave up, I sold it, and I went on to other devices. Well, a couple of months ago, I was talking to a friend of mine that used to own a lot of Palm PDAs, and he pointed out that there was some third-party software out there you could get that would do the same thing on any Palm PDA that had an SD card slot in it. So it got me thinking, maybe that would be different enough that it would actually work, and it wouldn't look like a, a Palm was trying to connect. So I got this Tungsten uh, E, and it was still in its blister pack. Uh, from 2003 and of course the battery was dead and I had to buy a new one and solder it in, into the back but it's working fine now and um, I got the card reader software and it was still being sold and I tried it out and it worked fine it mounted right on the Mac desktop like it was supposed to and a quick look over at the system report on the USB bus shows it was identifying itself as a Sony card reader so again, not as a Palm device, but as a Sony card reader, and it works. So maybe my theory isn't too outlandish, I don't know. Anyway, let's see if we can get this to work with the iPhone. Okay, so I have the USB cable plugged into the Palm, and the other end is plugged in here to the USB to lightning adapter for the iPhone. So the first thing we'll do is launch the card reader, which will turn on the USB mass storage. And there it is. Now my other videos when I've attached various drives and semi-smart devices, I've usually just copied over some photos and a song to prove the concept. But the Palm is such a smart device with a huge ecosystem behind it. I believe we can do something more interesting in this video. So let's get some applications on it. Let's go get some games. Well, there's quite a bit of Palm software still out there on the internet. And I'm gonna to go to a page here that has some free games. So I'm going to grab this Pac-Man clone, download it, and there's one more I want to get here on the second page. It is a Tetris clone. Okay, so we'll go back. And we'll go into Downloads. Here are the two games. They're zipped, so we'll unzip them. We're looking for the PRC file. That is the Palm application programs. So we'll copy this down to Palm, to the Launcher folder, so it shows up on the operating system here. And we'll go ahead and get the Pac-Man clone. There's a README file in here, but we just need the PRC file. Same thing here, down to the Palm 
launcher folder. Okay. Now we're going to disable the mass storage so that we can access the card again from within the palm. Go up here, do that here. And there's the two games. So let's start with Pac-Man. Perhaps not a completely faithful arcade port, but it is quite playable with this little control pad. Okay. Let's take a look at Tetris. Now both of these games have sound if you have headphones plugged in. And this is quite nice, very similar to the old Game Boy one in terms of how it plays. All right. So as you can see, it's very easy to go out to the web on the iPhone, get Palm software, side load it onto the Palm, and be up and running in just a few seconds. So the next thing I want to talk about are the core features of a PDA. There are still core features of smartphones today. Things like contacts, calendar, and notes. Can we export them from the iPhone and import them into their native apps on the Palm? So let's take a look at how that might work. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn the mass storage back on. And then... Let's go to contacts and let's export James Tiberius Kirk. That's a good one. So we'll hit share, save to files. We'll give it a name. Save it to the palm. All right. Let's try notes. Got a recipe here for a Cocktail called the Turquoise Blue. Ten bonus points to whoever can tell me what movie that's from in the comments below. So let's save that one. And save to files. We'll give it a name. Save to palm. Now the next one with calendars. It's interesting, the iOS version of Calendar does not export ICS files, which doesn't really make any sense because the Mac version does and the version of the Calendar out on the web and iCloud does as well. I don't know why the, the iOS one doesn't, but there's plenty of other third-party calendars that will. So let's just go into this other one here, and we'll do this event, Pinball Night, and I will share that. Save to files, give it a name. And save to the palm. Okay. So let's go back over to the palm here. And the palm applications are not designed to open up files. They are designed to get their information from the palm desktop software when you sync or when you beam from another palm up here with the infrared port. So when I was trying to figure out how to get these imported, I found this nice program called Resco Explorer, which is a general file explorer that shows you files you wouldn't normally see in the Palm interface. But one of the neat things it does is if it knows what the file is, it'll hand it off to the Palm appropriate application, just like it was being beamed to it from another Palm. So if I click on the James Kirk VCF file here, it acts like it got beamed from another Palm. Do you want to import it? Yes. And boom, now Kirk is in my contact app on the Palm. Um, here's the recipe notes. Uh, text files are weird. You have to do a open with for some reason, then choose memos. But same thing here. It acts like it got beamed. We hit yes. And now it's in my memos app. So the calendar entry is a little different. Uh, the Palm is expecting VCS files and ICS is like version two of VCS. As far as I can tell, they're 
pretty interchangeable. If you just change the extension, they seem to work with each other's software. So we're going to go in here on the ICS file, rename it, and we will change the extension to VCS. And now when I click on it, it says, hey, do you want to import that to your calendar? Yes. Boom. Now we have that entry in there. So this turned out really cool. When I was originally going to do this program, I was just going to copy over some applications, but being able to export these files from the iPhone and import them in their native app on the Palm was a really cool find, and I think this just makes this a lot more interesting than it could have been. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is how to create some content on the Palm that the iPhone can use. Now we could do something simple like create a text file, but that's pretty boring. So let's take a look at the Teal Paint program, which is very much like Mac Paint was back in the day. And we'll make an image. Give it a name here. Call it Tree. up a little bit let's get some green grass in here and shrink this down a little bit and we'll make us a tree. And let's give it some leaves. Pull up to the top and let's put in a sun. Okay. We will save that. Okay, let's export that to a JPEG, we'll save it to the Palm, okay. So let's get out of here. Let's turn the mass storage back on. Let's go back to our files app here. And there is the tree JPEG, which I will save. And then if I go to my settings, wallpaper, Choose new wallpaper. Make this my lock screen. Look at that. Image I just made on the palm is now my lock screen on the iPhone. Pretty cool. And you know what the best part about all this is? There's no desktop computer involved here. Just two smart devices, albeit from different generations, but they're able to share files and create content, share it with each other. And this has just been wonderful. This has been one of my favorite ones to film because it's so versatile. So if you've been with me for a while, I hope you're enjoying these videos. If you're new here or you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It does help out, but that's all for now. Take care.